this is Ghana tonight. Coming up next, there's a lot that happened and the anticipation ahead of Parliament today. The quest for Parliament to resume to deal with uh, urgent government business. Has hit a snag as Speaker of Parliament, Abban Sumana, Kinsfor Bagman, adjourned sitting indefinitely amidst confusion over the declaration of four parliamentary seats vacant. We unpack the issues, plus a conversation with a former Supreme Court judge, Justice William Atuguba, retired, and also would, would have one of the persons who have been following this quite closely also joining us on Zoom in a bit shortly. But it's uncertain when Parliament will resume. And, and that is because the Speaker of Parliament, Right Honorable Alban Sumana, Kinsfor Bagman, adjourned sitting indefinitely, deepening the woes of the new patriotic party caucus in Parliament, as this has dire implications and consequences on government business. And stay with me every step of the way tonight, because I'm going to show you the, the consequences if this indefinite adjournment of Parliament stays and the businesses that are pending right now until further notice. Let's see exactly what the speaker said today after making reference to the service on him on this particular case at the Supreme Court. I note that we currently have a quorum to transact business, but not to take decisions. In view of the current circumstances, the fact that there is a question on the composition and constitution of parliament, and having regard to the public interest and the exigencies of the state of affairs in parliament, I will proceed to, in accordance with standing orders 59, adjourn the house indefinitely. That is sine die. So, based on the details of standing orders 59, the Speaker adjourned Parliament Senate indefinitely. And as we speak now, we're getting information that there are some attempts by the NPP caucus in Parliament to have some members also come together and have the Speaker, in fact, get the Speaker to call an emergency sitting in the coming days. So we'll see how the coming days will look like. But as the status quo is right now, Parliament has been adjourned indefinitely. And then stay with me, we'll tell you why this is of concern, especially to the NPP caucus and by extension to, to the executive and, and government for that matter. But the makeup of Parliament as we speak, based on the Speaker's declaration last week, Thursday, is that the NDC still stands with 136 of the seats or members of parliament in this eight parliament the npp by the implication of the speaker's decision hold 135 of the nps in parliament and you recall <laughs> earlier today there's some news around that cynthia morrison the gonna member of parliament was decided to go in independent one of four mps who has been affected by the speaker's decision had rescinded her decision to go independent. Well, she's confirmed to us that that news is false, it's not true, it's unfounded, it has no basis, no legs, no feet. We'll hear from her and, and, and play back that shortly and, and why uh, she holds that particular view. But this is the composition. And you recall the speaker make reference to the fact that, yes, per the members of parliament who were in the house today, they were enough to form a quorum because Parliament only needs one-third of the members here in present to form a quorum. That's about 92 out of 275 if you do the calculation. Right. But if you also look at the analysis as others have brought in, that to the extent that there are four of them who are off now, we're dealing with 271. That still does not negate this particular um, instance of whether they form a quorum or not. But... The reason why the Speaker did not go ahead to have Parliament consider other items on the order paper for today was that they were not enough to do business. The members of Parliament present at the time were not enough to execute the business of the House. And the reason being that per the standing orders, they needed about 138 members of Parliament 
to be present. But per the mathematics, as we've seen right now, even with the NDC's current numbers, if all of them, all of the MPs of the NDC were in Parliament earlier today, they still wouldn't have been able to do business. That's what it says in there. And then these are what it dictates, that the majority of members of Parliament must be present, and not only be present, but must also be voting or take part in decision making and in fact the, the dictates of this you can make reference to in the justice abdullah versus the attorney general case and how things played out so that was settled by the speaker's declaration and the decision to adjourn parliament synodair indefinitely today but as to whether that news that some of you may have read, that Cynthia Morrison, a Gona West Member of Parliament, a sitting MP, who decided to contest that seat as an independent candidate in this forthcoming election, had decided to rescind that decision and, and, and rejoin the, the NPP. She says that's not true. She doesn't know where this is coming from. It's unfounded. The pictures that were slashed on, on social media. In fact, there were those who had indicated that that was the decision they and reason why that, that she decided to go back to the MPP. She says those pictures, they went to Parliament and took them. It had no basis for a decision on her not going independent. She spoke on News 360 earlier today. Take a look. Um, I, I went to Parliament today. We had our cocoa, and after that we had um, a couple of meetings. I took pictures with my friends and leadership and all that. And some of them, normally we put, we put them on our platforms. I don't know who is trying to do mischief and post all these pictures. I just got to the constituency only to hear that I've been offered 50 million CDs to step down and it's all over the place. And nothing like that has happened. If I send my decision to write to the EC, have you seen any official letter? And I haven't even really sent any letter to my leadership. You can find out from them. Nothing like that has happened. So whoever is a very bad journalist, because before you put anything out, at least you have to consult me or ask the leadership, even if I brought any letter, or ask EC if I have sent any letter to them. Nothing like that has happened. So there you have it. So you can safely disregard that news that um, she, she's not going independent. She's resolute according to what she said today, that she's contesting that constituency as an independent candidate on December 7, 2024, Agona West constituency. She was not alone in this. In fact, the Suhum Member of Parliament, Kujua Santi, was also reported to have decided to now f go back to the MPP to reconcile and fall in love with the party again. He has also come out to say that that's not true. He has not rescinded that decision to go uh, independent. But beyond all of this, the pending government business is what many are looking at, how this indefinite adjournment of parliament would be. Take a look at this and follow me closely. There are two pres the President Kufuado's Supreme Court nominees who have not been approved yet by parliament. There are tax waivers for some 1D, 1F companies that have not been approved by parliament. Apart from that, there are the approval of the 2025 first quarter budget that has not yet been even presented and approved by parliament. So whoever wins the 2025 election, uh, the 2024 election getting into the year 2025, the first quarter 2025, if things stay as it is now, the outcome of that election and who wins would have to find a budget to run the country at least for the first quarter of the year 2025. As we speak, if parliament and things stay this way, they may not come back. The LI2462, that a promise was made to the organized labor, that when parliament reconvenes, government had indicated they were going to take steps to repeal that law that opened up forest reserves for mining companies to get in there to mine and destroy our forest reserves. LI2462 is still on our books because Parliament has not started the process of repealing LI642. And then you also have the $250 million financial stability fund approval. That's not happened. And this is crucial because it, it is part of the process of 
giving some cushioning to the financial sector in this country that was heavily hit and impacted by both the domestic debt exchange program and then also the financial sector cleanup. And as long as this is pending, you should avert your minds to how the financial architecture in this country is also going to be impacted. The Ghana energy sector loan approval is also pending. And so many bills are also pending. The major of Electricity Company of Ghana and NETCO pending. You also have the Business Regulatory Reform Commission bill pending. And also the Office of the Administrator of School Lands pending. Interpretation bill pending. Nuclear Power, Ghana Authority Bill, Thema Power Authority, Major of Energy Commission and PRC, all of that pending. We also have uh, the VRA and the Bui Power Authority Major Bill 2024 pending, and this has been heavily resisted fiercely by the senior staff of the Volta River Authority. I'm sure that hearing all of this and the fact that Parliament, this eighth Parliament, paired this adjournment may not even come back to sit again, <laughs> they, they, would, they would be excited, sort of, because we understand that this parliament, this last sitting of this eighth parliament was supposed to last for three weeks, and then they would adjourn finally on the 14th of November, and then they will go and campaign. The next time this eighth parliament MPs come back is January 6th, so they then crossover and handover to the new parliament, that's the ninth parliament. So essentially, with this indefinite adjournment, if nothing is done, the life of this eighth parliament has effectively ended. That's what this means today. Gary Nemako is the director of legal affairs for the MPP, also expressed his thoughts about what happened earlier today. Take a look. Sometimes if you are a senior lawyer, you speak in parables. You don't sometimes speak direct, you speak in parables. And everybody who understands how lawyers speak in terms of experienced lawyers, how they speak, you understand the direction they are going. The speaker did not miss words. He acknowledged the fact that he, he had been set with a court ruling. And the ruling simply means the order the speaker made, the ruling that the speaker made, uh, I think on the, the date is not coming out, I think the date is 17 or so. The ruling that the speaker made, it's another ruling from the Supreme Court staying that ruling. He's staying that ruling. So uh, let tempest calm down. Let the country's nerve calm down. Uh, there is no need at this stage to fix anybody to say, well, I'm right, I'm wrong. It's a constitutional supremacy we are dealing with. It's about democracy, about rule of law. It's not about rule of men or people using the machetes to go and kill anybody. The internal strategy we are going to take. I cannot devote to you publicly. I will go into a caucus meeting, have a discussion between party and government. Uh, Communicate will come out. And I think, by and large, whatever will happen, publicly you will see it. Stage, you do not expect me to come out to tell the public what the party intends to do or what the government intends to do at this stage. It's too early in the day. But what I can tell you and assure the public is that peace will prevail. The storms will be calm. But in a matter of days, in a matter of days, you will realize that everything will be calm. He's hoping in a matter of days uh, there will be some calm brought to, to this situation. And let's stay a bit further on this matter and, and briefly. Going to be joined on, on the telephone shortly by the Honorable James Agalga. He is a member of parliament for the Bosa North constituency, one of the, the leading members of the NDC caucus as well in this eighth parliament. Um, you know, served as interior minister at some point. And... He's joining us on the telephone right now to have a quick conversation on how things are playing out and then also how the coming days will look like right now for this eighth parliament and whether this indefinite adjournment is one that we're hearing uh, that there are some MPP MPs who are having to get parliament to be recalled. Honorable James Agaga, good evening. Thank you for joining us here on Ghana tonight. Good evening, uh, my friend. Right. Now, we're hearing that some uh, there's some effort by the MPP caucus to have the speaker recall parliament for emergency sitting. I mean, what how how will this play out? What's the path that this will take if that is what is happening? Look, uh, Alfred, any attempt by the minority or a group of MPs to have parliament recalled must be resisted uh. because. Because why we have 
inflicted this situation on ourselves. Only today, we were in parliament. The minority elected to walk out. And the speaker was left with no choice but to suspend uh, the House indefinitely. Now, you know what? When members travel to their constituencies and a group of MPs decide to trigger the relevant standing orders for a new call, you know, you do this at the expense of the taxpayer. Besides, you inconvenience members of parliament. Alfred, let me give you an example. My constituency is about the farthest from the capital. If I have to travel by road, I need to do 14 hours of drive time. Okay? Even if I decide to fly to Tamale, I still have to do about four hours to get to my constituency. And so, I think that we must get serious as, 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 as parliamentarians. What would occasion a sudden, I mean, recall? What would occasion that? I thought some members of parliament have gone to the Supreme Court. Fundamental question is, has the Supreme Court dealt with the matter that is before it? If not, it means the status quo entry, which is that the NDC court now constitutes the majority, holds. So even if Parliament were to be recalled, what 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 would have changed? So Alfred, I think I think we must get serious. And uh, if I were the Speaker, any such invitation to recall Parliament would be thrown away. I see, but the, the Speaker adjourning Parliament indefinitely was it part of the the cocktail of options that you, the NDC caucus, was expecting? Well, the speaker's um, exercise of discretion to adjourn the House indefinitely was never on the table. It, 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 it wasn't something we uh, thought of. We had the expectation that at least uh, the speaker was going to allow us to continue with uh, the business of the day. We did not anticipate a workout by the uh, minority until they sprang that surprise on us. We thought that uh, uh, law-abiding members of parliament, they would have uh, taken over their seats, I mean, sat to the left of Mr. Speaker, uh, to allow for government business to, to, to flow. Unfortunately, they decided to run away. So, um, Alfred, I, 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 they cannot have their cake and eat it. You see, they decided to walk out, you know, today, they stage the walkout when they knew that there is some government business to be transacted. So if, if they acted responsibly and the speaker had now decided to suspend the housing deputy, uh, I mean, it would be mischievous for them to turn around and, and, and say they are asking for an emergency recall. An emergency recall to do what? to consider urgent government business. As I run through, there are two Supreme Court, court Justice business? nominees. What is the nature of the, the, the business? If you look at today's order paper, what was on the order paper? A number of bills. A number of bills on the establishment of some public universities. But why on earth did they back in the chamber? question is, have they now succeeded in having the matter they themselves have uh, uh, sent to the Supreme Court result. Has the Supreme Court uh, uh, given a definitive pronouncement now as we speak? Right. You know, you know, you know, when the speaker hinted that, oh, he has now been served with some uh, uh, orders of the Supreme Court, all along, hmm, things were done at Mr. Speaker's blind side. Now, if he has been served, the, 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 there is a statutory period within which Mr. Speaker, I mean, can, would be allowed to file, I mean, his uh, uh, defense in the matter. Statement right. of case. Okay. Etc. There, there, there is a certain statutory period. If the statutory period within which Mr. Speaker must file, I mean, his defense or statement of case is not exhausted, 
the Supreme Court gets to do nothing about the matter pending before it right now. So right. what it means is that the status quo must be respected. So if, 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 if they suddenly, uh, 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 you know, decide to trigger a recall, I mean, what, 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 what would they be seeking to achieve? Humble James, I got that. The recall would not change the status quo. Right. We'll see how the coming days will look like on this matter. I thank you so much for talking to us. My pleasure. James Agaga is a private legal practitioner himself, a member of parliament for the Bosa North Constituency, former deputy interior minister.